This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Drew. If this box doesn't tell you exactly what we're looking at before we even look at the end plate, then you're not a fan of my channel. This is about as simple and as plain as it gets, and it, that means it must be an SWFA. Not just any SWFA though, but my first ever LPVO version of one of their scopes. And not only that, but it's their 1-6 HD. This one is in first focal plane illuminated and basically comes with everything you might expect. This comes courtesy of Patreon provider Andrew. So Andrew, thank you very much for sending this in for a review. I've been wondering how well their LPVOs have, will work because I've basically got my hands on, at this point in my life, all of their other optics with the exception of a low powered variable optic. I've gotten all their mid range stuff, all of their fixed powers with the exception of their 6X. I had their 3 to 15 and their 5 to 20 HD many, many moons ago. And now it's time to branch out into one of these. And it's kind of unfair because this is their top of the line LPVO. The first thing you're gonna note is this thing is awfully, awfully heavy. Pulling in the scales, it tops in at a whopping 22.22 ounces, which for an LPVO is pretty chunky, let alone a one to six. Just like everything else, we are going to start at the back, but not before we take a look at the bottom and see this is made in Japan. Now, unlike many other LPVOs or optics in general, this does not offer a fast focus eyepiece. Oh no, SWFA is smart. Smart in that they said, you know what, screw it. Let's give you a standard eyepiece with a lock collar. What this allows you to do is get a very precise focus on the reticle to your eye, lock it up, and never have to worry about it again. So if you would decide you want to run caps or something like that, you have a nice rigid mount for it. Or if you're not running caps, you don't have to worry about this thing shifting out of place. You come over here, cinch it up like that, and <laughs> this thing ain't going to go anywhere. However, before we talk about that, I have to say these threads are incredibly, incredibly well machined. There's almost no play whatsoever, and they are absolutely buttery smooth. Up from there, we're going to move on to their magnification ring, which as you can see is a 180 degree throw, which is typical of any LPVO. But one thing I have to have a critique on is they're sort of... I wouldn't even call these splines, just the way they do their interfaces with their controls. This is not really a great surface to grab onto. It's slick and it's pretty friggin' smooth. It's not ideal. You are gonna have to get a throw lever for this if you ever plan on using this to its maximum potential. If your fingers are a little sweaty or dirty or if you're wearing gloves that don't have really aggressive pads on them, you're gonna be sliding all over this thing. That being said though, it is very, very smooth. I'm also very happy to hear that there's no noise whatsoever from inside. From there, we have our illumination controls, which go from one to 11 clearly with offs in between each one. And listen to that. That is perhaps the loudest control I've ever heard for your illumination. And it's not just the noise that gets you, it's the way it ratchets into the next position. This is awesome. You know you're turning it, and it literally pops it out and pops right in. Once you're there, there's a tiny little bit of play, but this is a secondhand scope, so we don't know how used and abused this thing has been. But it absolutely sounds incredible. Awesome, 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 awesome job. From there, we have the battery compartment, which, as you'll see, does this weird thing where it's got two little sections to it. Underneath, you'll see a standard 2032 battery, but it's not the more, how should I put it, the more mid-tier to high-tier battery compartment with the six fingers and a big old spring underneath. Very big old spring, in fact. Let me put that down to a way I'm not going to destroy it. Big old spring, big old O-ring. Now, if you unscrew this double section up a little bit, which is a little tricky because, again, SWFA's lack of knurling or texture on this makes this a job. This is not something you want to do all the time. But if you pop this open, you have room for a spare battery, which is a very nice touch. 
From there, we're going to take off these massive caps to reveal yet massive turrets. These things are huge, unnecessarily so. Unless you plan on, you know, dialing this thing in for precision, which very clearly you probably could with these things. Turrets are a little bit quieter than I might like, but they have a very positive feel and click to them. And that's more than what you'd ever need for an LPVO. The one nice thing is when I go to do my box test on this, because this is in mills and these turrets are very legible and very easy to read, it should be a, a cinch to be able to get a nice precise measurement on everything. The overall fit and finish on this thing is pretty damn nice, pretty consistent with what I've seen from other SWFAs, even though I think the finish on this is a little bit shinier than what we've seen on more of their classic line, as you can see here, side by side, there is definitely a difference between the two. With their classic, you could easily mark this thing up. It cleans up fairly well, but compared to this, if we were to hit our nail against it, it doesn't show up anything. So if this thing gets dirty, it should be very easy to clean off. But enough about talking about the exterior. Let's look through this thing and see what it's made of. I've always been happy with how SWFAs look. The image quality on them is something to appreciate especially with Japanese glass. This is so far no exception, at least from what I've gathered. The only thing that's a little weird is something I'll bring up in just a moment, but so far the image through this is pretty nice. You don't see that much of the scope body, and the reticle is more of a personal preference than I think it's going to be anything else. Checking out the illumination while we're here, it's actually not that bad. The size of the reticle makes it not as important as something with a very fine crosshair or a very small reticle, but given the fact this thing has a very massive reticle, the brightness of it ultimately isn't as important, but I would still wish it was a little bit brighter. Like I said earlier, this thing desperately, desperately needs a throw lever. If I have to move this thing quickly, it's not really happening. It's uh, annoying, really annoying. So I mentioned this uh, briefly earlier, but this is another thing to note. It's not really an issue per se, but it's something that you will definitely notice when you're using it. Whenever I crop the video to this level, we usually cut off some of the top of the image and some of the bottom. Here we see the entire image through the optic, which means that the view through it isn't as big as it is on some other optics. And that's just something to note. It's not a bad thing per se, but if I have the option of having a larger view through the optic, like, Meow. my cat, like many other LPVOs or MPVOs or HPVOs, I, I personally want that. But that's that's it. It's uh, just something to take note of. And that's going to conclude this unboxing. As always, thank you very much for watching, and see you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.